Hi, I'm Richard Morris. I'm one of the founders of The Giving Machine and we work with thousands of amazing retailers who enable us to share some of the sales commissions when you buy products from them uh, with the causes that you choose all over the UK. And one of those retailers is Herring. And Herring uh, is a, an established English uh, shoemaker. And they, uh, one of the main things about them is they're a family business started, I think it was in 1966. Um, so that was a year before I was born. So uh, looking at me, uh, that was a while ago. So they've been around a while and their objective really is to uh, sell and work with uh, a number of the sort of finest English shoe manufacturers. But they also have their own range of shoes, uh, the, the sort of herring shoes. And I've got a pair here to uh, review uh, and have a look at. So let's just have a, 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 an unbox of this. Now these are, um, uh, according to the box, these are brown, um, calf leather shoes uh, in a sort of a Buxton and they are sort of a boot uh, brogue. So just uh, now these are obviously sort of fairly premium uh, shoes. I think they retail somewhere just under 200 pounds uh, side of things. So let's have a look at see what's in the box and the, and the packaging. So one of the things I, I, I do quite like is each shoe does come in its own uh, little bag. I know it's just a little thing but it's part of the quality and um, I was thinking actually this is re really useful because I've just come back from a trip and one of the things about shoes sometimes if you put them in your case because sometimes you're traveling you might go in something a lesser shoe like a trainer um, you, you kind of don't want to get these uh, sort of shoes damaged but anyway you can see what a lovely and it's a, a, a brogue style a boot lace-up boot and uh, I think it has a sort of rubber welt um, uh, sole here so really nice and, uh, and solid you can uh, you can see that. Obviously, we have the other shoe in the box as well. So here we go. And in the box also, apart from some of the basic packaging, uh, we have some shoe cream with uh, beeswax. And I think um, this is really good to see this because oftentimes I think uh, we will get that sort of cheaper polish now because I notice it is that it, Kiwi doesn't do their sort of... Um, the actual old style polish because people weren't buying it. They were buying the sort of simple sort of wipe on stuff. And that's okay, but the, um, but actually I'm not always sure that it gives us as a good, uh, I suppose, um, input to the, the leather that it needs in terms of some of the polish. So it's really nice to have some shoe cream uh, here. And uh, so I'll just um, uh, open that up. You can see obviously it's a colored shoe cream. So it kind of, it feels to me like going back a, a little bit in time to, to to when we used to use proper polish with the shoes. And one of the other things that is quite nice is a shoehorn because obviously with a boot, now I do have a shoehorn here, but I was thinking I need one for traveling, but uh, with a boot, it's it's gonna be easy to sort of compress the back when you actually put your, um, when your foot in. So that's kind of the, the shoes. I've ordered them slightly larger because I have um, orthotics. Um, so I need to take those out of the shoe, uh, my other shoes and put them in. Um, I found a few years ago that I had one leg reasonably longer than the other one. And fortunately, uh, discovered that a bit later on life, uh, but it did explain why I was walking around in circles a lot of the time. A couple of other points to note, uh, which I was quite pleased about. It's very recycled packaging. Uh, obviously, I know we've got uh, a little bit of this, but apart from that, it's uh, I'm going to use all of that. And I know uh, notice from some of the information on the Herring website that um, this is all part of their uh, sustainability um, objectives and net zero objectives, which is always good to see uh, for any company. And uh, I also did look up the word brogue just as a matter of interest. Uh, and apparently I'm just looking at my, my notes here. Um, it actually comes from an Irish word brogue, if I've said that correctly, uh, but that derives from a Norse term meaning leg covering. So anyway, there you go. Hopefully you've learned something new about the origin of the word brogue as well. So here we are, I've laced my shoes up, isn't that amazing? But one of the things I would say is that lacing mechanism I talked about earlier, I think I will change it because it's a little bit harder to, to tie them up. But if you look at them, um, I really like that. It's, it works well with sort of a, a boot cut jean, um, but I would wear them with smarter shoes as well. And just very, very comfy. I can already tell, and one of the things that I find the number of shoes sometimes is the brogue style suits me because you don't get such a, a harsh um, fold across here that tends to bite into the shoe. And I can already feel this leather is fairly soft, even though it's fairly new, 
which also means that wearing it in is going to be uh, a lot easier because um, sometimes that can be a bit of an issue too. But obviously I'll come back and after I've worn them for a little while so that uh, I can give it a sort of a decent feedback. But so far, really love the shoe, really feels good. The leather already is warming up and I can feel it sort of softening, which is quite, uh, as I say, is is quite quite nice. And just looks great as a, a sort of a, a, a smart but casual shoe. I thought it would be helpful to see these boots actually in action. And uh, here you go. And uh, they do actually work in the real world. And although I'm left footed, I found that putting my right foot forward first seemed to work better with these boots. So let's have a closer look at the shoe. Um, you can see here, um, it says here that they are Goodyear welted and I'll just sort of hold it up so you can see. And you can see the stitching uh, quite nicely around the edge. Looks brilliant. And it is just a really nice sturdy shoe, but I did find the leather uh, does give quite quickly, which was really helpful. I have quite a wide foot and sometimes that can um, hurt a bit in the shoes, especially when you're wearing your orthotics. One thing I did mention earlier was the laces. So there was some kind of weird um, uh, lacing up thing. And I found if I do the lacing up the, the way I prefer to do it, um, there isn't a lot of spare lace, to be honest. So um, it may be useful to get um, slightly longer laces, um, but it just about worked. And once you tighten them up, there's enough to, to um, uh, actually tie uh, the bow. So uh, that's kind of the shoe. Really, really nice, very comf comfortable, fitted well. What I thought I'd do is I would just show this comes with the, the, the shoes and it's just really important uh, with any good shoe, especially uh, obviously leather shoes, is to keep the leather hydrated. Uh, by the way, if you just see that's uh, Sid, just feeling very playful at the moment. Uh, our dog, actually Sid, do you want to come say hello? Come here, come here. Come say hello. And say, now this is Sid and we need to keep Sid well away from leather shoes because he does like leather. So with the shoe cream, I think the general recommendation is that you should um, treat them at least once a month, but chances are if you're wearing them often, you, you need to um, uh, rub that in. And it's just a thin layer of uh, the uh, sort of polish and just rubbing it in uh, sort of uh, gently through. I know it sounds obvious, but we don't always get see these things. And in fact, in the box, there weren't any sort of instructions on this. And I think, um, you know, good shoe care uh, to make them last a long time and look after leather, leather is really, really important. I'm going to try and avoid going onto the um, onto the stitching because it's nice to keep a little bit of that colour. Now I'm just going to do the, these front bits, and generally speaking, you should leave that for about five minutes uh, for the uh, uh, for that to sort of really soak into the leather, and then use a microfiber cloth to uh, take that off. But um, I haven't got a microfiber cloth, so I'm going to use another bit of kitchen towel. But come back in a few minutes, and then we'll just do that. So here we are a few minutes later and um, basically this is soaked into the leather and I'm just going to give it a, a good wipe just to remove the excess off. And you can see there's just a really nice, well I can see it anyway, <laughs> there's just a really nice soft sheen which is much better than using some of the sort of cheaper products you can get at the, uh, at the supermarket if you like. And it just really makes sure that the leather is well looked after. I'll just do that there. You can probably see that in the in the light. Just really, really good. So all in all, so far, I can see it's a very well-made shoe, really nice. Obviously, the one thing I'd always say with boots here, and for me is they are a faff putting them on because you've got to undo the laces quite a bit. But the point is, if you're wearing them all day, it's only a few minutes uh, extra time. And I must admit, they're, they're really good. So I will be using these quite a bit. Um, really, really uh, like them. So that's the end.